Hello everyone and welcome to the latest episode of Fabric Espresso. As usual, this is Philip and this is... Hi, I'm Kevin Conan, one of the senior product managers for the Fabric Warehouse. Nice to have you here, Conan. Thank you for joining us. I have to admit that I really like your outfit today, which makes me think that you have some special gifts for us today. Indeed I do. We're here to talk about two features for our automated maintenance. So the first feature I want to talk to you about is data compaction. And before we really get into data compaction, let's first remind ourselves that the Fabric Warehouse is a SaaS product. What does that mean? It means that we should have performance by default, it should be easier to implement, and you should get value from it faster. And to support that, we're automating as much of the maintenance as we can. So with that, let's talk about the challenge that data compaction is solving for us. One of the issues that we have is that reading parquet files, which is where all of the data for your table is stored, works great if there's only a few files that are bigger. But if you have a whole bunch of small files that are very small, then that's going to be much slower. Related is delete vectors. When you do deletes or updates to your table, we can't change the parquet files. Those parquet files are all immutable. So that means that we have to write additional files to tell us which rows we need to ignore from the table, which is called a delete vector. So with that, when you run a query against the table, we receive feedback from the query engine that tells us to take a look at this table to see if it should be compacted or not. If it meets our criteria, we go through and we rewrite the table so that we remove the delete vectors and we also go from a bunch of small files into a few larger files so that we get better performance when you're using the table. With that, why don't we go ahead and jump into a quick demo so that you can see how this works. Okay, so we're going to start here in OneLink Explorer. And as you can see, I'm inside of a table that's called Fact Sale inside of my DBO schema. And we have 26 parquet files that are making up this table. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and off camera, we're going to run a quick delete on it to remove a whole bunch of files. And then we're going to trigger a data compaction just by querying the table so that you can see the effect on the number of parquet files. So with that, let's go ahead and jump back over to the Query Explorer. Okay, so here we are in Query Explorer, and we're just going to do a very simple select count from the fact sale table. It doesn't need to be a very complicated query at all. It can just be this simple as finding out how many rows are in our table. So here we can see that we have 11 million rows. With that, let's go ahead now and jump back over to uh, the one like explore so that we can see how many parquet files we now have. So here we are now inside of one like explore again, and you can see that we now have 34 files. That means that data compaction ran and you can see the new files here at the top because we're sorted by date modified. These new files are smaller now for some of them because that it removed the deleted records that we removed earlier and it likely combined some of those smaller files after our big delete into larger single parquet files. Thank you, Kevin. This means that we finally can do insert subsidy deletes and we do not care about the number of rows affected, whether large or small number of rows affected, and, we, and the engine will take care of the table layout. It will be always in the optimal state, right? Absolutely. But you will notice though that it only ran that data compaction after I did the select. The reason that we don't automatically do this after every you know, insert, update, or delete that you do is because that we want to make sure that we're adding the right value. You might not be done doing your data modifications, or this could be a table that just isn't used for some reason. So in those cases, uh, if it's not being used, we, there's no reason for us to do any maintenance to the table. And if you're not done doing your data modifications yet, or better to wait till you're completed those before we start doing any kind of maintenance. And the way that we know that is because you're now starting to select from the table. And as of today, in a documentation, there is there are performance guidelines. And one of them says, if you're inserting a lot of data in your table, please do it in a large batches and not row by row. Does this feature change this? So if you're in a spot where you do have to do small inserts, maybe you're doing streaming of data or other things, 
This will help avoid performance issues when you're doing select statements from that table. However, if you're trying to get the best performance that you can from your ETL, it's still best to do large batches. Perfect, thank you. Would you like to share something else with us? I would. So I did mention at the beginning that we had not one, but two new features, right? Our other new feature is checkpointing. So what a checkpoint is, is it has to do with the internal log file in the data warehouse that tells us which of the parquet files we have to read. Essentially, it's kind of like a Delta Lake log, but it's our internal version of it. And after every 10 transactions, meaning an insert, update, or a delete, we go through and we create a checkpoint file. So you might be wondering, why does that matter? If we don't do checkpointing, that means that we have a new log file that's going to be built after every transaction. So if you did 10,000 transactions, every time you do a select on this table, it has to read all 10,000 log files. By creating these checkpoints, it means that you only have to read from the checkpoint forward. So you should never really need to read more than about 10 files in order to do a read from the table now of the log files, that is. Additionally, it's not just the internal log file that we do the checkpoints. We also uh, put those checkpoints over to the, uh, the published Delta Lake log file that we create for every table. And we also do it for the SQL analytical endpoint for the internal log file that's used with that as well. So it's benefiting all three areas with the checkpoints. With that, why don't we go ahead and do another quick demo that can show you that checkpoint being created. However, because that the checkpoint that's used within the data warehouse is in a hidden area to make sure that we keep ACID compliance within the data warehouse and that the table is not going to be accidentally changed so that it gives you incorrect query results, I'm going to have to use the Delta Lake log version of it to show you that checkpoint. But again, with that, let's go ahead and jump into the demo. Here we are, we're back inside of our Query Explorer again. This time we're working with our color table. Uh, if you may remember from the SP rename table that we inserted the three primary colors into it. Since that demo, I've done a few transactions so that we're close to that magic number 10, but we're not quite there yet. So with that, let's go ahead and insert the three secondary colors of green, orange, and purple. And to do that, I'm going to purposely run each one of these one at a time to make sure that each one of these generates its own log file. So we've inserted the green, oops. And there goes orange. And last but not least is purple. Okay, so now that we have inserted these records, let's go ahead now into One Lake Explorer where we can see the Delta Lake log files. Here, you can see that we are inside of the color table, and we're going to go into the Delta Lake log. And you can see that we've had uh, 11 transactions altogether, but we do have a checkpoint at the very top. So what the system's going to do is it's going to read that checkpoint and then read any of the Delta Lake logs that are created after it. And as soon as it gets to another 10 transactions, it'll create another checkpoint and so on. So overall, this makes it just faster and better for the system. So what do you think, Philip? Did I do pretty good this year as Santa Claus? Oh, uh, Kevin, I, I think you did it perfectly, actually. So you showed us two really great automatic maintenance features. Uh, the compaction, which take care, take, takes care of your data files, making sure that they are optimal in optimal number of files and sizes for the engine to, to read it. And then you showed us this checkpointing, which makes sure that the metadata for a table is in optimal state for reading, right? Absolutely. I'm super excited about this because, you know, in my previous roles, I used to actually work as a database architect and as a database administrator. So I remember having to set up all these maintenance jobs on my own monitoring them, making sure that they're running, troubleshooting any kind of issues and all that. You know, with Synapse dedicated pools, you really had to dive into how all of these different features work together. This just makes it easier where we take care of it all behind the scenes for you. 
Awesome. So it's mean it's all done for you now by the engine. Well, uh, if you have any questions, please let us know in the comments. Also, please don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. As usual, this is Philip and this is Kevin. Thank you for watching. Bye.